What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale, and I am so excited to get extra spooky with this week's guest. I mean, he is one of the co-host of the award-winning podcast, Watch What Crappens. Uh, you can watch him every week. You can catch him on Jeff Lewis as well. It's Ben Mandelker, everyone. Hi. Oh, oh my God. Cue lightning, cue honor. thunder, cue, cue bats. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, it's just, it's so exciting. Thank you so much for having me on here. Absolutely. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, happy Halloween. Thank it you. is the week of Halloween. Tis. Did you do, oh, tis. I love tis. <laughs> I love a good conjunction. I do too. I love a good Halloween tiz. Christmas yes. tiz, wait your turn. People think it's tiz the season, but no, no. it's tiz Halloween. Tiz first. Halloween first, tis. always. Did you hear that, Mariah? <laughs> Just wait your turn. Um, did you do anything over the weekend? Halloween vibes? What's your I, thoughts on it? You know, I actually got invited to a Halloween party this year, and I was not able to go. Which it's one? Um, well, it was just a friend's party. Which one? My friend, Diallo. Oh, I... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you got invited to Diallo's party. <laughs> we all were invited to Diallo's party. Well, but here's the thing. Like, lately, this may sound really sad, but, like, my little joke to myself is that gay pride and Halloween are the times of the year where I get to see all the parties I'm not invited to. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I call it, like, not not invited season. And yet, this year, I was like... Oh my God, I actually got invited to a party. I got invited huh. to a Halloween party. And of course, I didn't go to it. Why so. didn't you go to it? I wasn't able. I already had plans. I had dinner plans. Oh. <laughs> it's the, be the best is to turn down a Halloween party because of like real things. Uh, you know what? It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> real things. I have to have dinner. Yeah. Sorry. Now, so, you know, it's actually good because mm -hmm. I honestly just didn't have the energy to assemble a costume this year. Mm -hmm. but it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. And like, I haven't done like a full proper Halloween costume in a few years. I used to like, well, when I say I used to go all in, I'm not like one of those all in Halloween people who start their costume, you know, three months ahead of time and yeah, go same. to like industrial light and magic, all that mm -hmm. stuff, you know, and come out looking like a velociraptor. Ugh. But get me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I do like to put some thought into it. And I have to say something, which is that I'm very proud because in 2008, I designed my own Price is Right costume. Yes. As Bob Barker? No, I would. The I wheel. Was... You went as the wheel. <laughs> I went as Plinko. I'm slutty Plinko. I, Plinko. I just yeah. fell all over the place. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was like, you're the nails. Yeah. I'll be Plinko. I'm going to throw myself at you, bitch. <laughs> Is it Hellraiser or Plinko? We don't know. <laughs> Could you imagine that that's what Hellraiser was all this time? Guys, I'm a game. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't he like a Rubik's Cube? He's, yeah, you Something. Know, I never got Hellraiser. You know, I don't watch horror movies. Mm -mm. But, um, so, you know, I had like three cents to my name. So I made this homemade costume. I went to Michael's. I got some foam core and I made this little rectangle that I, I got a little bit of ribbon. I hung it from my neck and I put some construction paper, green construction paper in front of it. And I basically made it the thing that you stand at when you're <gasps> bidding, you know? One dollar. I put my bid as seven fifty one. Cunt. You know, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I was like this, and I and I went I, I and I attached a wire hanger and I put like a little like poof ball on uh -huh. it. So it was like my little microphone attached to it. And I put on a college sweatshirt and I walked around with it and it was really fun. Uh -huh. And that was my costume. And I put it on my blog. And then my friend Michelle, who was working at the best week ever blog at the time, uh -huh. she posted it, like, look at this costume. And then, like, two years later, my friend said, Ben, do you know that you're, like, viral on Pinterest? Oh, good for you! I was, like, viral on Pinterest? Yeah. And apparently, my Price is Right costume became, like, a thing. It has now become, like, the Price is Right costume. If you look it up, it's on, it's on, mm -hmm. it's there. Mm -hmm. And then I was just informed that Target is selling an exact replica of my costume this year. So, but are they calling it, like, game show contestant? Probably, yeah. probably. So, like, normally I would be like, I can't believe you stole my costume and I'm not getting credit for it, but, like, I literally just stole CBS's property. So I can't really, wow. I don't have a claim to it, but I feel like, I feel like I peaked. And yeah. so yeah. I'm not going to do another costume, I think, after that. I, uh, I I never knew that I would have another viral Halloween costume guest uh, mm -hmm. on the show. Um, Wait, did you have a viral? I did. What? I did. I went as Selena Gomez. Oh. Um, but I was slain to Hano singer Selena Quintanilla, but with Gomez Adams' face oh. and a <laughs> okay. thing on the shoulder. And I got a picture of it online. And then the next day, people were like, this wins! Like, it's still, like, producer Land was like, 
Uh, I knew this costume before I knew you. I mean, there she is. Just oh, my goodness. Up there. And then people, the <laughs> mess is when they start doing their own versions. Like, it's the like past a couple of years were like, oh, my God, they did this, they did that. But, um, yeah. I'm that very, is that is amazing. Thank you. That was really fun. And I like a good, like... like it's like a word puzzle. Yes, I do word puzzles. Like, that's Me too. my thing. I have a word puzzle this year. But I can't wear my costume until actual Halloween. Okay. Because it's scary. It's what is scary as in like it's like it will scare people. Yeah. But it's a word puzzle at the same time. Mm -hmm. Can but, I I'm trying to I'm trying to guess what sort of like classic concentration read It's the perfect mix of horror okay. and pop culture. I'm very proud of it. It's folklore meets mm. pop culture. Okay, I'm really excited to see it. I really, I'm good. like trying to think, but I'm like, the last thing you want for your podcast is a guest going like this. Um, you call that a um, costume? <laughs> Trash. I'm going to well, think about it all day long. Here's like some Plinkos. Uh, okay. We had them. I don't know. Oh, Hellraiser? Hellraiser they went Plinkos? Away. <laughs> Here, I got it right Plink Okay. Oh, there's some Plinkos. So yeah, mine is, if you do, well, so all those people down there, all those people down there, that, that's my costume. Wow. <laughs> that's mine. Bitch stole my costume. Can I tell you something? I once, like 10 years ago, I went up to Beta Breakers in San Francisco and people were wearing the costume and I was drunk and I walked up to them and I go, that's my costume. And they're like, what are you talking about? Oh my I got Halloween Karen. And I was like, no, but I was happy. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, I was like, where'd you find that photo? Was, they're like, we saw a guy on the internet. Where that I was, was me. I go, that was me. They're like, no, it was. And I was like, pull up the picture. And they, I've they got receipts, up, proof, timeline, <laughs> price is right. And then they pulled up the picture. I go, that's me. And then they were like, this person's deranged. Oh. This is holding on to his fam. Like that's, I was like, now I know what Faye Dunaway feels like. Absolutely. God, if Faye Dunaway could, could get and play, I would watch Faye Dunaway play Plinko. Oh like my God, day. Faye Dunaway on The Price is Right would oh. be amazing. My bid would be my sister. No, my daughter. No, my sister. My daughter's like, I'll take Faye. it back. You're in my line. <laughs> Go. Oh. This episode is brought to you in part by ZocDoc. Listen up, Just Sayers. Making decisions can be very difficult without all the information you need. And ZocDoc is here to help you find the right doctor by giving you all the info you need to make the right decision. And when you're looking for a doctor, sometimes it can just feel like names on a list, but ZocDoc helps you focus on what's important in finding a provider. ZocDoc is a free, oh, we love free. It's a free app and website where you can search and compare high quality in-network doctors, choose the right one for your needs, and click to instantly book an appointment. We're talking about in-network appointments with more than 100,000 healthcare providers across every speciality, from mental health to dental health, eye care to skin care, and much, much more. Plus, ZocDoc appointments happen fast, typically between 24 and 72 hours of booking. You can even score same-day appointments. Look, when I'm going to be looking for a new provider, I know exactly where I'm going. I'm going to go to ZocDoc to find the provider and care I need. So stop putting off those doctor's appointments and go to ZocDoc.com slash Sayin, S-A-Y-I-N, to find and instantly book a top-rated doctor today. That's ZocDoc, Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash Sayin, S-A-Y-I-N. ZocDoc.com slash Sayin. Let's get into some stories, shall Let's we? There's it. so Let's much uh, happening around Halloween. Martha Stewart is handing out full-on cash mm. to trick-or-treaters this Halloween. Yeah. Um, I don't get a lot of trick-or-treaters in my neighborhood, Same. and it's for the best. Yeah, for the best. I don't want to. I don't trust anybody. No, I don't want to. I don't want to interface with children if I don't have to. I know. There's nothing that makes me more angry than people who leave the buckets filled with candy on their door mm. and expect children to actually just, just take, take one, one and then I get mad like I'll see just an empty bucket I'm like yeah and it's like 8 30 I'm like Geds. yeah just answer the door uh so here's the thing I can yeah. totally get down with Martha Stewart um mm -hmm. handing out some money uh she is also oh my god can we can <laughs> we take a trip to Martha Stewart's on Halloween yes. she's giving out assortment of candies uh but and money, you know? Let's I, go. I also you know thought, what? I thought that said assortment of candles, and I was I, like, ah! You know what? It says the headline also says, a con this is, she said this in a conversation of Vogue, so my mind went to, she's handing out copies of Vogue. <laughs> you, I went candles, you went Vogue. You're like, Martha, bring it in! Yes. 
She's uh, like, you're getting an apple. Oh my God. Yeah. She's like, you're getting it. You're, yeah. You're getting, you're getting an, an apple, apple that Snoop showed me how to make a bong out of. Yes. Um, so let's read a little bit of this story. So we have um, Martha Stewart, 83, revealed she offers an assortment of candies and a little cash to trick or treaters during a conversation with Vogue. She says, I live on a farm now. So the gate is always decorated and the security guard has to open the gate for children who are trick or treating. I usually give children an assortment of candies, quite a few candies in a bag and a little cash too. How much is a little cash to Martha Stewart? Uh, it was like, just like $5,000. Right? You know, <laughs> you know what? By the way, this is the biggest crock of bullshit and I love it. I love yeah. that it's full of bullshit. Martha Stewart lives in my parents' town. I know exactly where she lives. You know where Martha Stewart lives? I know exactly where okay. she lives. Okay, I used to, because I, I, it was the town I was raised in. I, my school, I have to go down the road where she lives now and everything. No kid is just walking up to those giant gates and be like, excuse me, Miss Sarah, can I have some candy? I think people are probably trying all the time. Yeah. And maybe she like lets one or two in yeah. as just like a publicity thing. Right. But like those gates are are gating, as they say. And yeah. like you're just not gonna you don't you just don't go and trick-or-treat at Martha Stewart's house. Yeah. And also for the rest of the year, they are electrified. Yes. So those <laughs> gates are electrified. There is a moat with alligators yeah. in it. And we all know she's not really handing out cash. You know, she's just handing no. out now that Kmart closed, she's just passing out sheets. <laughs> passing out the old sack. You know, I still have a hand towel from have the Martha. Towel. I have one from the Martha Stewart collection. Yes, Kmart for years. Yeah, lasted. And she's just handing. I mean, I, I she's not handing out. She's not handing out. Oh God, dare I say it? Coins. <laughs> she's not handing out coins. No, no, that's not like a, that's beneath her. I hope so. No. I don't know. You don't think she has like a big like igloo water cooler filled with pennies? I, she, she actually she probably does. Like, I know, hopefully done. She probably has kind of like a scheduled. This is when like when children can come and trick or treat at Martha Stewart's, and you have to sign Timeline. up ahead of time, and you get the golden ticket, and they come through, and they have a spread. You can take a photo with mm -hmm. her, and there's like a beautiful stack of brownies and like a uh, Rice Krispie treats as like ghosts and everything. But then like after 45 minutes, thank you everyone for coming. Please see your way down Route 22. Yeah, or or she just opens the floor and they Veruca Salt <laughs> to the unknown. Or it turns out the, the the light projector goes wrong and we realize we've just been dealing with a hologram this entire time and she's at a totally different estate. I would love that. <laughs> the goof. Um, so she says... She also has some of her favorite Halloween memories, which I, I'm, I'm here for, because I feel like Martha Stewart really gets into Halloween, yes. which I like. She says, we used to make box lanterns out of a cardboard box. Okay. You cut a jack-o'-lantern and on the sides paste orange and black tissue paper over the holes and you would put a candle in it. A real candle. You would walk in. <laughs> oh, that that seems totally safe. I know. Well, it was the olden days. <laughs> you would walk it into the Halloween parade to school where we would all congregate down the playing fields. And in the middle of the playing field, we threw our beautiful pumpkin boxes, I want to call them, down into the pool. What is she talking about? <laughs> She's lost her mind. Has she lost her mind? We put a candle into a cardboard box and then lit it. In the pool? And threw it. So it was Those like a Roman floating. candles. Yeah. Okay. She was she was like bombing streets. Uh so she says, Stuart also revealed her number one tip for throwing an amazing Halloween party. Don't be insipid. Oh, okay. I was planning to be a, a little bit insipid. I know. That's her rule. Number one rule I know. for a Halloween party. Don't be insipid. <laughs> I like that that's like put up, have bowls of candy. Yeah. Have a, no, Dry eyes. For, first things first. Don't be insipid. If you're going to be insipid, think again. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell. That's a for little, Christmas. She says, a little jack... Jack o' lantern on the table. That's not much of a Halloween gesture. I think you have to sort of go all out. Okay, this is I don't, why her okay. and Ina Garden aren't friends anymore. I know. By the way, I don't. I, I think it's like not cool that she's gonna sh she's gonna shame someone for putting a jack o' lantern in the table when she just bragged about her favorite thing is to put a candle in a cardboard box. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. Jack o' lantern is a step up from that. Yeah. Nice try, Martha. We're on to you. <laughs> uh, what if Martha Stewart went as Sybil Shepherd this year for Halloween? That. Would, uh, and what if Sybil Shepherd went as Martha Stewart? Well, I think they did, she does. She, she did the Lifetime movie. She did that movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's been still in that role. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. She. Uh, I love. By the way, I love the Martha Stewart and a Garden Beef. That's oh, me my too. Favorite thing. Why do they not talk? Because she went to jail. She went to jail. That's what. I was like. Yeah, Ina, bought is fine. Ina, <laughs> Ina has no time for that. Uh -uh. Okay, she's hanging out with Emily Blunt. Yeah. And smoking blunts. Smoking blunts. I saw Ina Garten uh, last week 
uh, she did a talk mm -hmm. uh, down in Orange County, uh -huh. uh, and Julia Louis Dreyfus moderated it. Well, did the interview. And Ina Garten, here's the thing: every time Ina Garten does something terrible, I just love her more. Oh yeah! Like if she's icing on Martha Stewart, love that. If when she like refused to do the Make a Wish thing for that kid, I was like, good for her. Yeah, boundaries, you know. Yeah. Like there's, she could literally do no wrong in my book. There was one time I was in LAX, and I saw Miguel from her show. Do you, are okay. you are you deep in the Ina Garten lore? My fiance is. Yes. Okay. Well, Miguel is like a florist in in the Hamptons. That that tracks. I would definitely. I would. I would guess Miguel the florist in the Hamptons. Yeah. Yes. And he, yeah. yes. And he used to be on the show a lot before she pivoted to real celebrities. Mm -hmm. And I saw him in LAX. I went up to him. I go, "Are you Miguel from the Barefoot Contessa?" I realized, by the way, I'm telling two crazy stories of me approaching people in public spaces. But this uh, is the perfect place to do it. Yeah. I went up to him. I was like, I was like, I just God, I just love Ina Garten. And she goes, He's like, Yeah. No, she's she's one. I was like, yeah. And I was like, then at that moment, I was like, I, I'm talking to a stranger in LAX about Ina Garten. And he was like, anyway, nice to meet you. I was like, bye. <gasps> that was it? But it was such a great like brush with the world, the extended, <laughs> the, the extended Ina Garten universe. Mm -hmm. you, you felt know? just like a like a pussy willow on Cape Cod, uh, just blowing in the wind. Just <laughs> to and fro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's, it was wonderful. Uh, well, you mentioned Golden Tickets, and have yes. we got a story for you? Please. I don't know if you heard about the Timothy Chalamet lookalike contest in Washington Square Park over the weekend. Heard about it. I enrolled. I had no <laughs> idea this was a thing. I did not know either, but it's exactly what I'd expect from Washington Square Park. Well, right. So we had Rap Boy Summer was a big thing. Okay. Um, which is not my costume. Not my costume. Uh, but uh, <laughs> doppelgangers oh. were all over Washington Square Park over the weekend, and um, they had a Timothy Chalamet lookalike this contest. Is crazy! I'm looking at this photo. How many people just look just like Timothy Chalamet? It's kind of scary. So hundreds of people packed the park at one one o'clock on Sunday when an unofficial contest was scheduled to take place. The winner was promised. Wait for it, fifty dollars. Okay. That's, al oh. that's almost as much as a Martha Stewart trick-or-treat gift. That's just a coffee in Washington Square Park, yeah. <laughs> Chalamet lookalikes were see, uh, seeing mill milling about the crowds, some inspired by the actors on screen roles, a Willy Wonka and Bob Dylan were spotted among the crowd. <laughs> and then, uh, cont uh, let's see. I have um, plenty of commotion between the eager crowd hoping to catch the various Timothy lookalikes and the NYPD who had officers attempting to manage the growing group of onlookers. Police tried to disperse the sizable crowd for gathering without a permit. A police spokesperson said four people, four people were detained at this event. You know what? That's embarrassing. You so why, embarrassing. The reason why is because if you have to talk about why you were ever arrested or detained, it's like, oh, what'd you do? I, I went to the Timothy Chalamet lookalike contest. What did you do? <laughs> I got rowdy. Yeah. <laughs> the Timothy Chalamet contest. I acted up. Uh, amid the chaos and confusion of the event, of the event, the actual Timothy Chalamet showed up. Get out. Did and it, no one knew who he was. <laughs> no, this, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, this either speaks to like how wild it is that so many people look like Timothy Chalamet, or maybe is it more like Timothy Chalamet is actually more generic than we thought. I I guess so, but I think I think that's the winner. I think the winner of the fifty dollars what went to like the Willy Wonka looking one. Wow, you know what I love about there's a photo of a bunch of them there together on this website, and what I love yeah. is that like they, I was like wow they all look like Timothy Chalamet, but then there's like one guy in the middle who's like got a mustache, looks blatantly not like Timothy Chalamet. I think that's actually Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> it, prob it probably. I is. think it is. I think that's him. <laughs> is that him, Land? No, he had a backwards cap on. Oh, he had the backwards cap on. How foolish of me. I forgot. Uh, he was out of Yeah, character. so that's him. Oh, oh, that's him. That's actually him. So yeah, so everyone was surprised. That just sounds like a night terror to me. It does. Like you're just in a room or just an out, like everyone's dressed the same. It's, and it's bizarre. As I mean, like I remember one time seeing something where Jewel went and saw, like went and like onto costume and did karaoke and did Jewel songs, and no one realized it was actually Jewel. <gasps> See, I love that. I love a celebrity that's, undercover. That's like my version of this yeah. that I enjoy. Not as much the Timothy Chalamet going undercover to his own lookalike event. You know who could have gone? Lady Gaga's alter ego, that Italian guy, as Timothy Chalamet. Oh yeah, that would have been good. Yeah. Have you heard her new song, by the way? I haven't. Is it not the Bruno? Not the one with Bruno Mars, right? No, thank no. you. It's no. called Disease. Uh, I love an uplifting topic, and it's <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually like really good. It's very born this way. I'm not gonna lie. It's, okay, and 
It was a conspiracy theory. Okay. Get ready. Pop conspiracy. I think it's because Joker 2 bombed so bad. She was like, ah, disease. Yeah, disease. <laughs> go, fly, like, fly. Like, what, what do we call it? I, I, I don't know. Disease. Okay, just go. Just it's go. really good. And she adds a little bit of the rah, 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 rah. Oh, yeah, that's so the rah, rahs are back. The rah, rahs. Okay, does it have like medical, like terminology, like put through it to be like, I'm so ill because I'm in love with you? Yeah, that kind, kind of, of that stuff. Okay. Like Danity Kane. Well, and also, I want you to hear it. We obviously, I mean, we can play it, but like we can we'll get in trouble if we like play the lyrics. But yeah. I kind of think it sounds like the intro to Vanderpump Rules. Oh, that's how that is. See, if you led with that, and that is also. <laughs> And that's a show that was also once called Disease. I mean, it has yeah. become a disease yeah. for the network itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was pitched as Disease, yeah, the reality disease. show. Disease, uh, sung by Raquel. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. I, well, I just wanted you to hear it, but we'll... we'll there is a song called Catch My Disease, I remember from like the, the mid-aughts, that was like very cheer, cheery and upbeat. By, by who? By Ben such so-and-so. By Ben Mandelker. <laughs> ben, yeah. You wrote the song? I wrote a song called <laughs> Catch My Disease. I should have led with that. Let's see. Can we play it real quick? I just want you to hear it. Catch My Disease by Ben Lee. Yes. Lee. Yeah, we'll we'll play a little bit and then we'll cut back to the yeah. reaction. Okay. That is good. It's good. It's not bad. You Perfect know, Halloween song. I, that's like, you know, sometimes like her music sounds a little bit too much like, I think, sort of generic music you might hear at the Abbey. Yeah. You know? <sighs> you know? I know. But this was has more of a hook. It's a little stronger. I it's like good. that 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 beat, that propulsive beat. It's like, been, I do like that quite a bit. It's good. It's been on replay at my place. All right. Like, I'm going to add yeah. it to my library. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, uh, oh. oh. Well, we go from Gaga to Sean Mendez. Um, Oh, I know. No. Did you see this over the weekend? So Sean Mendez has addressed new speculation about his spe uh, uh, <laughs> it was said heterosexuality, and then I was like, okay, <laughs> speculation about his sexuality in a new song called "The Mountain." Oh. Yeah, nothing says "Hey, I'm straight" like a song called "The Mountain." The Mountain. <laughs> so. She, uh, I almost said she. God damn it. Sean Mendes. <laughs> Sean Mendes is letting his music do the talking on his ongoing Four Friends and Family Tour. The Treat You Better singer has been performing his upcoming song, The Mountain, and he appears to weigh in on conversations about his sexuality and its lyrics. Some days I have a change of heart. You can say what you need to say. Mm. Uh, he's saying this on stage according to a fan's video footage shared on TikTok. You can say I'm too young. You can say I'm too old. You can say I like girls or boys. Whatever fits your mold. Mm. Um... Also, he posted a TikTok over the weekend where it was like they asked him what was in his phone. Okay. Did you see this? No, I did not. Hey, I know. You're busy. I'm like just Listen, scrolling. I, yeah, I, I had a dinner plan. Yeah, you were busy. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, I'm like, what's Sean Mendez up to? <laughs> um, so Sean gets on TikTok and he's like, okay, here's some pictures of like flower arrangements that he liked. Okay. Uh, he had a picture of an anteater. And he was like, this just reminded me of my friend. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> Listen, you know what? Like, come His on. friend with a very big nose. Very big nose, yes. He didn't, he didn't want to say it. <laughs> like, an anteater? Are you kidding me? <laughs> that reminded you of your friend? You know, like, you know, everyone has different uh, associations oh, with different had, animals. Then he had a picture of some guy's hands. Oh. I don't know what I don't I can't remember who the person was, but he was like, "Look at those thick fingers." He's like, "Those are the thickest fingers I've ever seen on a guy." And I'm like, "Stop! <laughs> Stop! What are Let, you doing? You you hear the words coming out of your mouth, and you're trying to dispel certain things. Yes, yeah. like you know. Uh, that being said, I would love to know who has the thick fingers. Is it in here? It might be in this article. Let's see. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, he, he he doesn't understand why people call him gay. Um, What's that? It's, it's not in this. It's one. not in this one. Um, he says he's been called gay since he was 15 years old, and it has affected him. He's like, I'm not gay. And I'm like, what does that mean? I had these problems with the way my voice sounded. I'm like, how do I sit? I'm always first to cross my legs and sit with a position of his feminine style, and I really suffered with that shit. So the situation opened his eyes and made him realize he wasn't alone in feeling that way. Okay, girl. Like. Uh. Well, God bless his journey, whatever it may be. It's the be, most annoying journey. It is a little bit of an annoying It's journey. the most annoying. I'm like, Luckily, he's very cute. It's like a cute, a cute journey. It's a cute journey because we're all going to be like, you did it. Yeah. You did it. 
Yeah. But like I, I uh, yes, everyone's journey is God, different. God bless Sean Mendez and his very special path forward, whatever that may be. And also, who's your friend? Who is, we want to know about the fingers. Who's your anteater, thick Aunt eater friend? <laughs> Thank you. Where's with their a, at? With a long, at? The, with a long appendage yes. that's somewhere on their body. Yeah, leave the at in the comments. Who yeah. is it? The at Show eater. yourself. Sean, I you take your time, honey. Well, 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 where's we're your more friends? Yeah, we, we yeah. care about the anteater. Yeah. That's what we want to know about. Uh, speaking of anteaters, the Menendez brothers have been resentenced. The L.A. District Attorney recommends they will be eligible for parole after serving three decades in prison for the 1989 murders of their parents. Mm. Isn't this something else? The power of Ryan Murphy. Ryan Murphy can, can spring... Anyone out of jail at this yeah. point. Anything can happen. Yeah. Like, I'm excited for who he's going to get. Who's who's going to come out of jail next because of him? Ed Gein? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not? You know? I don't even know if I'm like life. I was like, I don't even know if... I was like, wait, who, do I, who are famous people next, that are... Is Eileen Warnos still alive? Is Eileen Warnos still alive? <laughs> monster? Is she the monster? Could the monster we do Monster one. Monster? M monster Monster. You monster, have to monster, just... Monster, be, monster Squared. Monster Squared. Yeah, Monster 2. Yeah, too monster, too furious. Oh, God. <laughs> I, <laughs> too monster, too furious. Absolutely. <laughs> or like, what's another sequel? Um, like, what about what about um, Scott Peterson? Yeah, that would be a. I mean, I don't think we want him out of jail. I just want to see as like a thought experiment. Can Ryan Murphy get him out of jail? You watch. He's gonna have like everybody. He Everyone's has, out. He has like twenty shows on television right now. They never stop. I mean, Kim Kardashian. Almost passed the baby bar um, to have a statement about the Menendez brothers being, you know, released from prison. Yeah. I um, might make it though. It's kind of insane. People are saying it will happen probably like before so Thanksgiving. What is what is the basis for the so I haven't watched the show yet but mm. I actually I'm intrigued to watch it because I hear that they've that he's created a homoerotic element with amongst the brothers oh yeah which I appreciate mm. and so I want to hey, your brows history is your brows history <laughs> okay I'm into Menendez porn yes okay? yes yeah um but I'm I'm intrigued as the as the show sort of saying like actually these guys killed because they had to kill they were like sexually abused or something there was a lot of like flipping and I say that not like it sounds yeah. Um, <laughs> they 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 took it from the boys being kind of like sociopaths, like the dad threatening to take them out of the will. That it flipped mm. to another aspect of like, oh, they probably were sexually molested, mm. and they talked about that. And then uh, it kind of flips to another version of like, oh no, they were never molested. They were just mm. reading a book about like. Or they watched a movie about like these the billionaires club where they these kids shoot their rich parents and all that kind of stuff. So you never really knew. Um, but then um you find out that <clears throat> Lyle was having a, Lyle had a pen pal on okay. the outside who released everything, like all their private conversations, their letters and everything. So wow. they they lost their retrial. I believe, and then we're sentenced to 35 years. But then this new evidence that has been brought into play is from a letter from one of the cousins, I believe, that says, like, I can't be left alone with that. I'm afraid. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, wow. So I don't know why it took this long to. I know, what a shitty cousin. <laughs> what, a, what a shitty cousin. No kidding. So, um, the final decision is going to be left to a judge. The men wow. in their 50s had been on a journey of redemption and rehabilitation and had paid their debt to society, both for the time they've served and all they've done to improve the lives of others while in prison. So, pretty much good behavior. I wonder what they look... Oh, there it is. I know. <laughs> I was going to say, I wonder what they look like now. Because, uh, you know, like when they were sentenced, there were like two good-looking guys. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's like the, the image that we have in, in our heads. And I kind of feel like... You know, that's like a lot to live up to all these years later. And but now we see. I don't know. See, it's a little Bezos, a little Jeff Bezos y. You know? I feel like Eric is the one on the left. Got He's it. the one who's like, he could still like get it, I guess. But Lyle like, looks, you know, Lyle don't yeah. Lyle looks like I would see him alone in a park, like giving me that look. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, you know these, what I mean? these guys look like they're having a great time in prison. They look how happy well, they yeah, look. Yeah, they have friends. They yeah, they, they look very good. Look, look, the one on the left, Eric, seems very content. He's like, you know what? Hey, I yeah. had a great day today. Yeah. And and Lyle is 
Lyle is Lyle's uh, just Lyle. Yeah. <laughs> Lyle is just like he he's 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 very he's the up. practical joker of the cell block tango. Yeah, he, yeah, he really is. He just loves standing against that wall, and be like, uh -huh. I grew an inch. But yeah, he did have like a toupee in the show. Yeah, and he's now gone bald. I mean, you know what? I'm gonna call it Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. probably yes. Yeah. Dancing Wonder the Argentinian Samba, Eric and his brother Lyle Menendez. <laughs> it's murder on the dance floor. Yeah. <laughs> feel the feel the groove. That DJ is, gonna shoot our parents in the head. Yeah. You're joking, but that is 100% going to happen yeah. with that song. Mm -hmm. But the question is, are they gonna be dancing together as a duo? Yes. Or are they gonna be both on like, like head to head, like brother against brother? No, it's gonna be brother against brother dancing with themselves. Like you have yeah. to, like give it to Jojo Siwa. Remember when she was on? Oh, ha of course. Yeah, and she had like the girl partner, so I yes. think we have the two brothers dancing together. Mm -hmm, to Father um, Figure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> what other songs would be on there? Father Figure, Murder on the Dance Floor, um, Heads Will Roll. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> bang, bang. Bang, bang. Um, <laughs> disease. <laughs> disease. Because, you know, something's happened in jail. You have to. But I mean, like, it It was definitely, I've already seen a couple uh, Halloween costumes with these shirts. And also, let's never forget the uh, the attorney. What was her name? Kitty. Was her name Kitty something another? Maybe not. Leslie. 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 Kitty, Leslie. Kitty, Leslie. Same Leslie. thing. Who do we? Who plays Leslie in the show? Oh, it's... I feel like it's it Sarah Paulson again. No, it's not. But she like, did Sarah have... Sarah Paulson can't do everything. And she can't have every perm. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> I like, know. She had it for OJ. Like, let someone it, else is, pass the perm, Is girl. it someone random like Natasha Leone? Is it like, no. all right, everyone, Jerry, no. you're the people. Okay, these guys are innocent. It was... Let's see. Hold on. We have it right here. It's the cat. Bette Midler. No... Kitty, oh, Kitty was the mom. Kitty was the mom played by Chloe Sevigny. Right here, okay. It's Ari Grainer, Leslie Abramson. Yeah, mm. Ari Grainer, mm. who I don't know. Honestly, she looks great. I, I, I thought I she was fun. I feel like I recognize, I feel like, I sh you know what it should have been? Sarah Bareilles. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna write you a love song. <laughs> yeah, oh. Sarah, like, could you imagine Monster, Menendez Brothers, starring, starring Sarah, Sarah Bareilles. Like I think I, I think everyone has to tune in for that. Well, he's already doing like grotesquerie. Also, she looks like Stassi. It's kind of freaking she me out. Does. She does. Stassi meets like, Barbara Streisand. Yeah. Um, they're already using Travis Kelsey in uh grotesquerie or whatever. I can't. Yeah, I can't. Like listen, Travis Kelsey, super cute. I enjoy him, but like let's let's I, I don't want him in bait. I don't even watch the Ryan Murphy shows, to be yeah. honest. I don't watch any of the horror story stuff. All right. But like I just with Travis Kelsey going in there, if I were a fan of her, of those shows, I would feel like they have jumped the shark with Travis Kelsey. I, yeah. Some of the shows are really good. This was, this was, I watched, I watched OJ. I loved. Uh, that was great. People versus OJ Simpson. I, loved that. I feel like with these shows, it's very jump the shark adjacent. It like, always, you get there and then you're like, Okay. Like, I feel like yeah. horror story is just like, what is this? I don't know. It's like the billboards pop up all over LA, and I'm like, oh, oh God, right there's now. always some wacky thing yeah. going on. That's like how you know clown. the balls around the corner with I a know. Ryan Murphy billboard. I'm, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, I don't need to see Kim Kardashian covered in spiders unless she's actually covered in spiders. Exactly. I want to see a billboard. Show it to me, Rachel, in real time. Now, if he stunt and cast Ina Garten in American Horror Story, yes. I will watch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> American Horror Story, store bought. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just Ina being like, no! Store bought is not fine. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, okay, let's move along, shall we? So we have Chapel Roan. Okay. Who has now, af months after the Grammys, with uh -huh. her altercation on the red carpet, I don't know if you saw that, where she was screaming. Like, so, I guess one of the uh, photographers was like, fuck you. And she turned around, she's like, no, fuck you. And everyone was like, what? Yeah. So now, time has passed. Wounds have been healed. Mm -hmm. We've all moved on. Except Chapel has now pointed out the photographer again. Mm -hmm. She had his, their image burned into her brain. Uh -oh. Her brain was hot to go. And she turned around <laughs> and she said, hey, remember me? You yelled at me at the Grammys. And I want an apology. Sounds like she has a photographic memory. She really does. I, I, um, this was at the premiere of Olivia Rodrigo's Guts World Tour. And she oh. went up to this photographer and said, Hey, you were very disrespectful. Um, I deserve an apology. 
Wow. What do you think about this? You know what? I'm glad that we finally have a pop star who hails from the school of Real Housewives interactions because this Ooh. is every season premiere of a Real Housewives episode. It's yeah. like, okay, you know what? Last time we were all together, which is always code for like reunion in New York City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were so rude to me mm -hmm. and I just did not like the way you talked to me mm -hmm. and I deserve an apology. Mm -hmm. If we're going to move forward in this group together... You owe me an apology. And that's basically what she's doing. She has learned all her confrontation techniques from, from the Real Housewives. Real Housewives. Wow. That's what that is. Wow. Right? Because yeah. no celebrity gives a fuck. Yeah. But like she, she knows this is part of my storyline. This is the story <gasps> beat I've got to hit. Wow. If Chapel Rowan was on the Real Housewives, she, her tagline would be like, you want to disrespect me? <laughs> Good luck, babe. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my brain hurts. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, there's a pink pony club thing yeah. in here somewhere, but mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't know enough pony puns, unfortunately. Oh, I'm more than just one, a one trick, trick pony. pony. I'm the whole pink pony club. If you want to join, if you want to join this club, you got to be more than a one trick pony. <sighs> She's mad at me for making that joke. Look at her at that photo. <laughs> She's, She's like, she's so mad. I deserve an apology for that pun. Yeah, yeah. I'm not opposed to being on The Real Housewives, but I am opposed to having a terrible tagline like that. If you can't stand the heat in the kitchen, baby, you're hot to go. Mm -hmm. You're free to hot to go. I don't know. We'll workshop it. Chapel, we'll workshop it, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so, yeah, she went after um, this photographer. And you know what people are saying? Like, good for you. Because uh, she says that she has dealt with a lot of anxiety uh -huh. with her really quick rise to fame over right, the summer. Right. And now she's like, you know what? No. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna yell back. I'm gonna I'm gonna take back my piece. Take back your take back your uh, yeah your what's it called? Your story. Your take back your your pink pony club something. Disease. Um um, you know, I think that like... Take back your power. That's what it is. Take back your what, power. What could I think of that? I feel like I would normally say a celebrity just should just be above it all, mm -hmm. right? Like you just don't care. You don't get into a mess. You don't like... As Dorinda Medley says, pigeon, eagles don't fly, eagles with, don't pigeons, fly with pigeons, you know? Yeah. But if you're going to do it, then sure. But here's my question. Fun. I was watching um, Salt Lake this week. Uh because the World yes. Series is happening. Did you know that the World Series is happening? Yes, of course. Yes, yeah, the traffic. Every, uh, yeah, everywhere. Dodgers, Dodgers, Dodgers. So I had, a, I had a show here on Friday, and I was like, oh, yeah, the Dodgers are playing. Because it was actually a good crowd. I was like, oh, my God, nobody's going to be here because it was like a Dodgers. USC game, Dodgers, Lakers, like every every game. Yeah. It was like a Pink Floyd co Two for uh, one concert. at Subway. Yeah. Two for one at Subway. Everyone. Absolutely. There's Bogo something. at Payless. <laughs> Like everyone, everyone, everyone was like everywhere. And then people were like, don't leave tonight. Yes. We we're like, okay, cool. So I got here. It was great. It's like, oh, the World Series is happening right now. And this guy was like, um, yeah, we won. And I'm like, great. That's great. I go, so that you're really excited about World Series. And he's like, yeah. And I go, well, let me tell you about my World Series. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask you a question, straight man. Do you think that Lisa Barlow's actions were justified at Angie's 25th wedding anniversary party? And he was like, what? And I'm like, <laughs> that's my World Series. Absolutely. Yeah. That is the World Series. But going back to Chapel Road, I totally, completely agree with you that it's every Housewife storyline. Because I was watching Salt Lake, I was watching OC, and... I'm sitting there like, how how do they scream at each other mm -hmm. and then just go to dinner like everything's and they just, fine? I mean, in that episode, Mary and Heather and... I, I forget who the third one was in the conversation. We all do. We all do. <laughs> but Mary was like, yeah, Heather, I think you're two-faced and I think you lie a lot. And that's all you do. You get in the middle and you lie. And Heather's like, I have been so good to you. And she's like, yeah. you've also been bad to me. Well, name the times I've been bad to you. Well, name the times you've been good to me. And they do this whole yes. thing. Oh, and Lisa, Lisa was there and she goes, okay, have you said everything you need to say? And she goes, 
Yeah. And they're like, okay, cool. Should we do a group hug? Yeah, okay. I'm like, if I have if I have an interaction like that, it is like four weeks of me stewing on it. And yeah. like processing and being like, where do I even stand with this person? Oh my God. And, and they then, just go on. But Orange County too, they're all trash. Oh. Like, they're, I mean, so mean to each other. Just like Tamara just being like, you're a fucking alcoholic. I'm like, girl, stop it. The latest episode of Orange County is yeah. probably one of the very best of that entire franchise. It was so unhinged. I don't know if I've seen as many unhinged episodes. Bad of, shit. Like, you like you have Tamara being like, well, she was looking up information because apparently Gina pushed Travis down the stairs. Oh, the FBI is involved. The, and then there's I'm FBI like, is involved. And then there's like, are you gonna put a hit out on me? Yeah. And then there's like talk. I mean, there were so screaming, many screaming in these restaurants where like the staff is looking at him. I'm I'm freaking out because I'm like, they're gonna get kicked out. Same. They're gonna get kicked out. People are going to ask him to leave. I know. It was so awkward, but they were the, the amount of shit they were just digging up on each other and oh. throwing at, and it was just from all these different places of the things that they were cute, like had to do with the DUI, has mm-hmm. to do with the bookie that involves the, the Dodgers, and then pushing someone down the stairs. I was like, this is an absolutely unhinged episode. It is yeah. wild. It's, it's so bonkers, and I have to say, I'm... Props to Jen for sticking up for herself. Oh my God, Jen was great. I love Jen. I met her on Jeff. She was great. Oh, really? So oh, yeah. fun. She's, she's been a really good addition. I did. I, I love she's been her. Great. Jen and Katie. I like them both. Yeah, you know, I like Katie too. Like I was, I was hoping for like a, something a little bit different from Katie. Like yeah. I thought that Katie was going to come on. And I thought she was going to be sort of like icy, you mm-hmm. know, and she is icy, which yeah. I like. I love that kind of like waspy, mm-hmm. like indifference. Icy golf course. Yes. Yeah. But um, I feel like she's like a little bit. Like, I, I thought she was going to be more of like a a, a head-to-head challenger for mm-hmm. Heather. And mm-hmm. I, I'm realizing she's not a head-to-head challenger for Heather. And that's okay. I like her in her own capacity. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I do like her. And oh, let's not forget about the fact that they... They started a whole feud about like Katie's daughter versus Emily's eight year old children. I mean, this was wild. Talk about a World Series episode. It truly is. Like, I mean, so we have the Yankees and the Dodgers, okay? And now we're going to play our own World Series. Uh huh. Uh, What are your thoughts on Shannon versus Alexis? Well, obviously, Team Shannon. Yeah. You know, love Shannon Bedore. I think Alexis, I, I. Alexis to me is a um, love to hate situation. Mm-hmm. Like she just seems so awful in pick so many me. different ways. Very pick me, but I'm so glad she's there this season. Yeah, I mean, she's been totally entertaining as this villain that's been shoved to the sidelines. Mm-hmm. So I'm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she really was the villain who was like, "Hello," and they were like, "Okay, get the hell out of here. We go, we're going to yell at ourselves now." Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. And thank God because we would not have had this episode if she yeah. was there. Like, and they they just aired everything this episode. And there's nothing more upsetting and like that drives me crazy than a housewife who brags about how many times a day she gets laid. I know. I never Girl, believe it either. Stop. Yeah, not by you're not getting laid that much by Johnny Jansen. Uh, she's riding me hard six days, six times a day. Yeah. Shut stop. Oh my God, it's 2 p.m. It's almost time for Johnny Jansen to rail me. It's like, oh, what? No, I don't think so. God, I don't think so. No, God. No, I'm not seeing that. I think that's my favorite horror character. Johnny Jansen <laughs> trying to rail me. Like, it, like it's just... I'll be a train on the just, bottom. Yeah, just John Jansen in the woods with a Michael Myers mask just slowly walking towards you. Like... <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Um, well, I know. I, I'm very Team Shannon on this, I think. I love that she has kind of like... I mean, not kind of. She has stood her ground the entire season season. She's put yeah. up with so much shit. So much. Like crazy where she's just been, uh, you know, her walk-offs are iconic. She's, you know, she's been a, I've been a, like an unabashed Shannon fan since she showed up. She's just a big, raw, gaping wound. Yeah. And I love that because I love that on a on a Real Housewives show when someone can't help but be who they are. Mm-hmm. Despite how many sombreros she might put on or how many like wacky costumes. She's like, look at me. I'm having so much fun. Mm-hmm. I'm having... So much fun. And then the tears start to come down her face. I know. You know it's I love it. And then, you know, she's very uh, real and raw with us about, you know, being constipated and having to use an enema in London. Yeah, I mean, yeah. wow. She really holds nothing back. She the only really thing that she holds back is her actual can't. poop. She can't. Yeah, <laughs> she can't really. Um, how do you feel about Cheap Housewives versus Christian Siriano? Oh, I love you heard that, right? Oh, yeah. I thought that was great yes. when Christian said that. That's how we should have known that Bravo was not picking up Project Runway again. Oh. Did you know this? That Project Runway is going to freeform. 
Oh. Isn't that sad? Isn't that like a sad way to put that out to pasture? It really is. Like that's not, that show does not deserve freeform. Like that does not, it does not deserve to go out that way. Yeah. Like, so when Christian Siriano said that on Watch What Happens Live, I was like, wow, that was a, that was a wild thing to say about like the Bravo brand in a way. It's like, like, oh, we should realize he doesn't have to give a fuck about Bravo anymore. He doesn't give a shit. But also it made me go, this is why I'm team Bronwyn. Absolutely. I love She's Bronwyn. Great. She, I mean, the only housewife who can wear a couture hot dog outfit on national television and yeah. get away with it. I know, because at first when she wore that, I was like, that's ridiculous. But then I start, as I started looking at it, I was like, wait a second, this is actually amazing because it looks like a hot dog costume. But if yeah. you look at it, it was just a dress with like a cape. Yeah. But it was styled in a way and, and designed in a way that it looks like a Hot dog. I was like, that's cool. I absolutely love her. Yeah, she's I love great. that she's the only one that pays. Cause I'm like, and I love how when she's disgusted with someone, she cannot even hide it. She starts to frown, like the biggest frown on Bravo. She's like, mm. uh-huh. And I love that. I love you. Like, oh, she hates this person. Mm. And she's gonna tell us why and tell them why. Who do we think the villain is this season on Real Housewives of Salt Lake? One, two, three. Lisa Heather. Barlow. <gasps> <laughs> really? Now, now I'm saying Heather, yeah. not because like, you know, you know, Ryan and I have talked on various podcasts about how Heather unfollowed us and everything. Cause she was, oh, she did? <laughs> well, she was she was mad that we had nominated um what's her face last year, Monica, as oh. like as like best newbie in our like award show. Get you know? over it. So she was very upset. I'm actually a big Heather fan. And I like I'm I I I've now talked about this too much on these podcasts where it sounds like I'm actually trying to like create a beef or something. Uh -huh. And I'm not. I'm just bringing it up here to, sh to say that I think she's getting the villain edit. And I'm saying that without the bias of that of that silliness because I, I still am actually, I still love her and I, I, I'm i a big fan of hers. But I think that she's getting a little bit of the villain edit. This time. I don't think she's getting a villain edit. I think she's getting a hypocrite edit. Okay, that's fair. You know what I mean? I think Lisa Barlow, I mean... I don't know. I feel like Lisa Barlow is just doing Lisa Barlow. Is she though? Like yeah. she, she like... I can't wait for it to be continued this week because oh it's like her storming out of that. Like, imagine acting like that at somebody's anniversary party and going up to someone's husband or partner and being like, how do you put up with all these lies? And like screaming and like her family's there. I mean, it, it, it to me, it showed I'm guilty. Well, um, yeah, it was so, it was such an over the top and such a quick reaction. Like, I feel like, if you have been innocent, we're going to the full extent. <laughs> we're going the distance. Yeah, like, we're going the distance. Okay, relax, Hercules. <laughs> but like, what? <laughs> like, I think that like, if you get accused of something that you didn't do, you're gonna have, you're gonna take like a beat, right? Yeah, you're gonna take a beat to like, what? Huh? We, what are you talking about? You're trying to imagine like, how did this? How, like, what are they even saying? But she was like, boom, right away, like, what? No, yeah. I'm going private security. Yeah, and you're like, wait a second. But I mean, that's, I mean, I love this. That's, that's Lisa Barlow's thing. Remember, she was going to, I'm calling my 12 lawyers I have on hold. You I know, know, but she just seems to have a problem with everybody and stirs shit up with everybody. It's just so like, ugh, it's really annoying. Yeah, um, I mean, I I feel like, she, I just feel like she's just doing the Lisa Barlow thing. It's yeah, like she's just, just sort Lisa of messy. being Lisa. Lisa being Lisa. Um, okay, Kim versus Croy. <laughs> oh my God. And that's, uh, this is Kim Zolciak yes. and her ex- NFL Troy, player Troy Bierman. Na, na, na. Yeah. Bierman. Um, so I don't know really any of the details going on. Neither Norm do they. <laughs> <laughs> Nor I mean, I've seen some things. Normally in these situations, I by default always side with the woman. I'm like, I just don't care. I'm always going to side with the woman. Yeah. But you, this is also Kim Zolciak. Right. So it's like, huh? I do remember seeing a video where he was like storming through the house. And I was like, well, that's no good. But then I also know it's like, but it's also Kim Zolciak. Who's half Chupacabra. Yeah. Who's half <laughs> yeah. 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 Chupacabra and other... with a blonde wig. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. There's part of me that kind of feels like I almost feel bad for Croy. I also feel like Croy could have, like, there was a, like, Croy knew what he was getting into with this lady. I don't know. It and is... so I'm like, it's, I mean, I still, th maybe my needle's still a little bit towards Kim. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Like, the stuff I've seen of him does not seem great, but I think that she's been like, it seems like she's very eager to exploit this for TMZ coverage. Which oh, is absolutely. Gross. I mean, my God, she went on the Surreal Life reboot. Yeah. She'll do anything. She has like 15 children. They're yeah. all going to be hurt by this. We don't know what they push... really look like anymore. We, we have no idea. except They all look the same, but we don't know what they look like. Yeah, they're you know? literally just like spitting images of each other. Yeah, I feel like... There's a lot of yelling in a carport. You know what I mean? <laughs> there's like there's like late night cops of, showing up. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. like, it's just like, yeah, he's in there. He's, he's deranged. And then he comes yeah. down, he's frustrated. 
I don't know. I, they they are both trash boxes, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I guess we'll see how it all shakes out. And finally, we have Tamra Judge versus Empathy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to side with empathy on this one. Mm -hmm. Tamra, Tam gosh, Tamra's Tamra's had a real rough go of it this season, huh? She's really stepped in it, stepped in, and like so many unforced errors on her part. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious actually to watch. So much that she has to pull the autism card. I've never even seen the oh. autism. I've never even seen the autism card being pulled. I didn't even know that was a card in the deck. I did not know there was an autism card. I did not know the whole time. She pulled it. Cards Against Humanity. I know. Card, it's it's card. so. Wild, and then the fact that she had to get on two T's and be like, "Guys, I'm sorry, I messed up." That's I what she does. I spoke too soon. Just <laughs> being autistic over here. Turns out I may have Tourette's. I'm like, wait a I, second, I Tamra. I know. <laughs> it's it's so wild, and I just I I saw that happening, and I was really um, like, excited no. that a lot of the uh, pop culture blogs and internet everything kind of yeah. was like. She's only saying this because she's acting like such a bitch this entire season to be like, yeah. guys, I'm I'm crazy. I'm on the she, spectrum. And yeah, I'm like, girl, you can't say that. Girl, just because you got a bill from your cable company does not mean that you're on the spectrum. <laughs> but she is... Your power's just out again. <laughs> your it'll come back on. You just We need to reset our modem, okay? Yeah, let's reset that modem. Uh, that being said, people are like, they need to fire her and fire Heather Dubrow too. I was like, now listen, no, everyone. Don't you come for Heather Dubrow. Now, let me tell... Okay, let me tell everyone here. Tamara is a monster. Okay, she's a monster. Mm -hmm. But we need our monsters. We need our villains for these shows. Mm -hmm. How many times do we have to go on these? We need our monsters on our reality shows, maybe not in office, but in our reality shows. Yeah. And like, you know, every good story needs its heroes and its villains. So like, let's let's not like, you know, Orange County just got back into a good place. Yeah. Let's not ruin it. Let's, let's keep this, because this dynamic is... Riveting to watch. Yes. Heather, people are hating Heather right now. I kind of feel like Heather is just getting a lot of stink by association with Tamara. I actually don't even know why Heather is like allied up with Tamara when Tamara No was, one does. Tamara was so vile to Heather last season. Like, terrible. Yeah. Like, to me, that's Heather's biggest fault. Like, why are you hanging out with Tamara? Yeah. Tamara's like... Was, was horrific to you and you've gone back to her. And now look what's happened. Everyone... the. The audience has turned against Heather. I mean, the audience is never really fully on Heather's yeah. side. Yeah. But they're really anti-Heather right now. And I think it's really mainly because of Tamara. Yeah. Well, I feel like it's also because of how she treated Jen and how, like, Heather was in that room and, like, Jen was reacting yeah. and, and, like, physically, like, pissed. And she was like, I like this side of her. And I'm like, <laughs> Heather, like, stick up for her, for God's sakes. I know, but I don't think that, like, that infraction is worth saying, like, oh, my God, Heather is the worst. She needs to be fired. I think, mm -hmm. like, you only get to that level of saying where people say, you need to be fired, like, yeah. if you're done something really bad. And I just don't see Heather having done anything egregious I this season. I agree. She's just been her typical, like, Heather self, yeah. which is... And I'm sorry, if Heather Dubrow was like, hey, Justin, you want to go grab a glass of Prosecco with this caviar bar in London? I'm like, 1,000% uh -huh. I'm yeah. there. Yeah. Because you know what? I think Heather Dubrow, I, you know, when they said she was coming back, I was like, really? Okay. But I have now come to realize she plays such an important role on this cast mm -hmm. because she is super rich and hoity-toity. Having her on the same cast as, like, people who are more just, like, upper middle, middle class, upper middle class creates actually a huge amount of tension. And like watching the women try to like grapple with their feelings of like inferiority around her makes a wonderful dynamic. So she has to stay. We mm -hmm. are keeping Heather Dubrow. And exclusive here, what did you think of the Housewives Beverly Hills uh, trailer? Oh, that was good. It was I liked good. It. I, I feel like Beverly Hills needs to pick it up because yeah. these other franchises are really like bringing it. Yeah, Beverly Hills is getting a little stagnant. Yeah, so yeah. I'm hoping that they like <clears throat> come for Kyle yeah. properly this time. Mm -hmm. It looks like they will. It looks like she and Dorit get into a fight. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be good. Um, you know, Beverly Hills is one of those weird ones where you're like, nothing really happens on this show, but you wind up getting invested in, in shit, you know? Yeah, that's. Um, I, I finally needed that. Explain to me. Yeah. And I like... <laughs> Thank you. And I like the... Like, why do I care? <laughs> and I like how they are, like, layering in Jennifer Tilly. That's a nice touch. Oh, I know. Jennifer Tilly. <laughs> and she's already said, like, I am I start some of the drama myself. And I'm like, her. Yeah. 
Yes. Like, I feel like pop culture has needed more Jennifer Tilly yes. in general. I say this. We've had Jennifer Coolidge. We, it's time for a Jennifer Tilly renaissance. Oh, my God. We need a tell, Tilly sans. And you know what? How about Tilly's? <laughs> How about Jennifer and Meg? Bring them both back. Wait, Je who, Meg? Who's Meg? Meg, Meg. Before there was Jennifer, there was a Meg Tilly. Meg Tilly was... Oh, Meg, yes, her sister. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> wow, I haven't heard Meg Tilly in a long time. See, this is why we need the Tilly sans. Wow. <laughs> it's also probably the best, like, sans uh, mashup that there is. Like, you know, Tilly sans is, has a nice flow to it. I love... I, I cannot wait to see her. I think she's going to be just so fun and mm -hmm. bubbly, and I'm really excited to see what she brings to the table. Yeah. If she's going to have like Sutton's back from day one. I, yeah, um, I hope but she does. I do too. I love I love Jennifer Tilly so much. All right. Well, that was our Housewives recap. I, I mean, that was that pretty was good. Great. That was exciting. I needed that. I needed, you were the perfect person that I needed to vent this about. It was a big week for episodes. Yeah. Honestly. It's insane. Okay. So we have time for a couple more stories. Mm. Um, Nicole Kidman has confirmed another iconic AMC ad is in the making. Is it Christmas already? <laughs> Um, I hope it's actually a good one. I was a little let down with last season's AMC ads. <laughs> I don't. Okay, I don't. I don't remember. Um, no one does. People were booing. People were booing because she was just like me again. I'm here in the dark still, and yeah. no one gave a shit. They were like, "Give us stiletto in the puddle." Give us trench coat reveal. Yes. Give us yes. walking into the theater alone. Chaperone should take notes. That's how quickly the audience will turn. Mm -hmm. You be careful. Mm -hmm. Because we all love Nicole Kidman's first AMC Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. People were standing and up quoting it. Quoting it, applauding. reciting it, you know, valedictorian speeches, I hope. Yeah. I don't know that for a fact, but if yeah. I were a valedictorian, that would be my speech at Absolute. graduation. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? Yes, I could. We come here for a reason. Whatever, whatever it is she says. She said, "Graduate, congratulations to the class of 2025, because here <laughs> they are. <laughs> Throw the hats, AMC. Oh. Could you imagine? I, you know, I, I would not put it past Nicole Kidman to just do a graduation, because she's just... She seems to be constantly working now. Like mm -hmm. she is and pushing Salma Hayek everywhere. away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, someone needs she's her. on every show. I mean, she's doing like an NBC procedural. She's oh, yeah. doing like CVS ads. There's no like, one our, like she's be on a gas pump next. Oh yeah. No. Oh my God. I have Hello. to say something. Over the weekend. Yes. Uh, we were driving down Sunset Boulevard. And I looked over really quick. And Evan was driving. And I said, Evan, Nicole Kidman's right behind us. Stop it. And I looked really quick and it had the profile. She was wearing like a cream colored like turtleneck. The hair was done up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, she's she's behind us. She's behind us. She was driving like kind of slow. Uh -huh. And Evan's like, why would she be driving? Yeah. And I'm like, she's doing research for a movie. She's in character. <laughs> She's in character. <laughs> She's in character. She wants to be amongst the common folk, right? Yeah. Days of Thunder 2. And then Evan goes, She's not driving a fucking Camry. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. <laughs> He's right. My, it was not Nicole Kidman. No, it probably... But for a good three uh, minutes, I was deal. like... <sighs> the, 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 what is it? Uh... uh what was that movie? The couple, perfect couples, right behind me. We've got, I've got uh, Jillian. <laughs> Jillian's right behind me doing her practical magic. You've got, you have really like to die for behind you. I yeah. remember my first night in Los Angeles when I moved here. Uh huh. I remember going to the, I think it was like the Johnny Rockets that's on La Cienega across from like the Beverly Center. R.I.P. Is it still there? Don't know. Hard to know. I've, yeah. <laughs> I know which one you're talking about though. Yes. But I was sitting there and I was so excited. I was, in LA, I was there all alone at this Johnny Rockets. And I think I was so excited. I really thought you just would see celebrities everywhere. And you do, you do. Uh -huh. Like, it's not crazy to see a celebrity in traffic. And my brain was so ready to see a celebrity that at one point, a car, a Nissan drove by and I was convinced it was Michelle Pfeiffer. I was, uh, like, I, was like, I just saw Michelle Pfeiffer on my yeah. first night in LA. Yeah. Never mind the fact that there's no reason ever that Michelle Pfeiffer would be driving a, 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 a Nissan yeah. on La Cienega, but my mind just took me there. So I know that excitement where you're like, this is it. There's an icon in my midst. Yeah. In a, in a affordable sedan. Yeah. As someone who drives a Nissan on La Cienega, I totally get it. <laughs> we are out there. We're amongst you all. <laughs> well, keeping it Nicole Kidman uh, news, we have... 
Okay, she's in a new movie called Baby Girl, and she has a co-star named Harris Dickinson. He's 28. He admits they freestyled sex scenes after intimacy coordinator advice as she admits constant orgasms on set. Wow. I wonder how Keith Urban feels about that. Well, for her. I mean, Keith Urban, I, I'm sure it had nothing to do with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so she... This, this picture of her right here in this photo looks like she's real... She, the, her face in this photo is like... Did I just say that in an interview? Yeah. It's like, oh, Christ. I shouldn't have said that. I should have kept it to myself. Uh, she said that the uh, uh, she had experienced burnout from having to fake orgasm so many times on camera during the filming of the exotic thriller, which is called Baby Girl. Wow. Um, so during a recent interview to promote the film... Uh, they opened up about the process of filming their most intimate scenes. Dickinson revealed we'd have a connection, we'd have a discussion, sorry, we'd have a discussion with the intimacy coordinator and then Nicole and I kind of did our own thing with it once we were, we set the parameters of what we were both comfortable with. The intimacy coordinator is saying, what are you comfortable with? What do you want as a director? What are you comfortable doing from that vision? They're facilitating that and doing it very delicately without interrupting the actual scene. However, I think Nicole went, Fuck it. And Kidman chimed in, admitting she felt the most challenging part of making the film was actually doing it justice and trying to be open and raw. Okay, Nicole. And available each day in every which way to explore. She said, because of the nature of that film, it was either going to be completely vulnerable and exposed or you're going to get protected and then the thing wouldn't connect. When she met with the director, we talked through it. She said, just give us a safe space. Please don't make me look like a fool. And then she put on her nose from the hours and said, uh, let's fuck. Yes. <laughs> and then sing Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. <laughs> um, so the movie's about a, a high-powered CEO who has an affair with a much younger guy. Um, she had to fake several orgasms on camera. She said there were times when we were shooting where I was like, I don't want to... <laughs> orgasm anymore. And he probably said there were times when I was shooting when I also didn't want orgasm anymore. Yeah, and then she said, don't come near me. <laughs> I hate doing this. I don't care if I'm ever touched again in my life. Well, honey, you're married to Keith Urban. I'm sure it's not a problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, I am kind of here for that. I love that. Wow. Well, I'm excited for the return of the erotic thriller. I love it. You know, like, remember the 1980s was nothing but erotic thrillers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was too young to see most of them. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad to be of an age where I can see that there are going to be playing in theaters and do you still have, not see them. Do you have a favorite erotic thriller? Um, let's see. Uh, well, Fatal Attraction. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember seeing, I remember seeing uh, Body Heat, but I saw it like on TV, so it wasn't... Edited, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's a... Um, you know what, actually, speaking of Jennifer Tilly, Bound. Ooh, I think that, Bound. I think that Gina qualifies. Gershon. You no? Know? What That's about you? Good one. What are some good... I, I'm like actually blanking right now. I mean, Those Basic ones, Instinct. Basic Sliver. Instinct. Oh, yeah. I actually never saw Sliver, but I've, I've seen Basic Sliver's Instinct. Sliver's hot. Oh, Billy Baldwin. Oh, yeah. That was peak Billy Baldwin, Oh, too. yeah. Oh, that was peak me. Yeah. I was like, ah. <laughs> um. So, yes, I'm, I'm here for... I, and also, I'm going to be watching this watching Nicole Kidman on screen and being like, is she burnt out here? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I this could, is what she... I wonder if they went with the scene where she's burnt out from yeah, orgasming. Yeah, I don't know if I feel this orgasm. But what is, what is Nicole Kidman look burnt out orgasming? Just... <laughs> Christ! <laughs> like, what... <laughs> I feel like it's her just like walking down the street. I feel like anytime I've seen Nicole Kidman, she looks like she just is burnt out from having an orgasm. Or I'm going to watch Nicole Kidman having an orgasm, but I'll mute it and I'll play Megan Trainor's uh, criminal song from The Perfect Couple in the background. Oh, that'd be perfect. The dance sequence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, so we have Megan the Stallion. Um, has just announced and admitted to finally watching Sex in the City for the very first time. Um, and people are losing their minds, you know? Okay, what did she say about it? Well, she just said, I can't believe I have never seen this. Mm -hmm. uh, she says, nobody told me Sex in the City was this good. I'm pissed. Nobody said, Megan, you should be watching Sex in the City for the culture. I started watching the show and I cannot look away. I'm watching it while I'm working out. I'm watching it while I'm in glam. I'm watching it while I have nothing else to do. And I'm a busy girl. Yeah. So she pretty much kind of, you know... She's Team Carrie. She says okay. she's always starting the day. She goes, I don't understand 
uh, how this woman wakes up and is like, yeah. how am I going to ruin everyone's day? Yes. Which I was like, yeah. 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 And then wind up with like a really uninteresting guy at the end of the series. Yeah. You know? she, she And she goes off. Uh, she says, I hate this character. Why are y'all making her like sex is the ruler of my life? I was like, it's a horrible character. But then as the show kept going, I'm like, wait a minute. So <laughs> she hated Carrie. Now yeah. she loves Carrie. She says that Carrie is my girl. She's a little Delulu, but it's cute. She would be my bestie because she's so emotional. And I feel like it's okay to cry. It's okay to be a little crazy. Uh, she doesn't like Miranda. She says that's the worst character on the show. Yeah. Well, Miranda's a little... A little stiff, yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. it's hard, you know. But I mean, obviously, there are Mirandas. I mean, I probably am a Miranda, mm -hmm. you know. So I have to, I have to deal with that. Yeah, you know. I think that I am. Shit. There's a harsh reality I'm about to face. Okay, what is it? In my twenties, which was three years ago. Okay. <laughs> I would say that I was a Samantha. Okay. With the Charlotte Rising. Wow. And now I feel like I'm a Charlotte. Okay. With <laughs> Miranda. Rice. Oh, no. I think that I'm a Miranda <laughs> who aspires to be a Charlotte, uh -huh. but is still just a Miranda. Yeah. Which is good because, like, hey, Miranda winds up with Blair Underwood at one mm -hmm. point. Like, that's, I think, the greatest coup in the show. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I like that. And Evan is a uh, Charlotte with a Carrie. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we we compliment. Mm -hmm. There was a time. There was a time I was a Samantha. But well, those days are gone. Yeah, that's what happens. Uh, but I also love like that people now are just like binge watching old mm -hmm. shows. Yeah. I think it's so great. I uh, think so too. I'm trying to remember. There was a. Um, were you familiar with the show? Uh, it was on ABC called Revenge. Uh, familiar with it? I am still. I'm still subscribed to the yes. fan page on Facebook. Yes. Every now, like every six months, they uh, decide to throw up content and it'll be like, happy Thursday, Revenge fans. It was Remember my this scene? Yeah, I need to go back and actually watch it. It's been on my like calendar. I'm like, I right. need to start rewatching well, Revenge. To be fair, season one was flawless. Season yeah. two just went in the shitter and yeah. it never came back because and, yeah. season one was just like this perfect, campy nighttime soap. Mm -hmm. Madeline, Madeline Stowe, so wonderful. That, that scene where she slaps her Charlotte and Charlotte slaps her. Ugh. Ugh. So good. And she had that chair with the writing on it. But then season two, they were like... Was there only two seasons? There was like, I think, maybe four. I think so, but yeah. season two, they decided to make the gay guy ungay. Right. And then they also were like, um, oh, and she's gone off and she's like learned Kung Fu somewhere and she brought back that Irish guy. And I was like, oh, no. There's a whole conspiracy behind this family, and I was like, "Oh, you guys yeah. lost the thread." Yeah. And there was the there was the guy, the kid who worked at the from Gossip Girl who worked at the docks, and he was like, "I'm poor, but I'm righteous." And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> it uh, has something for everyone." Um, well, season one was perfection. It really was. I love that. I loved the whole Emily. Like, oh, <laughs> was her name Emily or no, her real name, her was, name Emily. was Emily? Her her show name, I don't know, Amanda, maybe Amanda. And remember, like. The, oh, the, the best was the cold opens. No matter what happened, there was always like, it always end on some line like, oh, really? I didn't understand that. And then- you Cut that, to- The waves, yes. these like waves coming into the Hamptons. So good. It's so good. It was a marvelous show. Um, Hallmark could never. Um, speaking of, Hallmark wanted, did you hear this whole story? They wanted to replace old talent like Lacey Chabert and uh, Holly Robinson-Pete. Did you hear about this story at all? No, I'm offended. Well, right. So you should be because uh, a former casting director for the company filed a lawsuit against the organization and executive VP of programming October 9th, accusing them of age discrimination, wrongful termination, and intentional infliction of emotional distress, among other complaints, according to documents obtained. Penny Perry, who's 79 alleged she was abruptly terminated in April after nine years due to her age. Mm. She accused Hamilton Daly of not wanting to cast actresses they considered, quote, old people, including Holly Robinson, Pete, and Lacey Chabert. Ms. Hamilton Daly constantly made reference to age and cited age as a negative attribute which did not fit with her image of Hallmark. She said in a lawsuit, she also told Ms. Perry that they needed to replace the old talent. So this bitch got fired. Wow. And said, I got fired for being old. And also, they need to revamp their Hallmark programming because these bitches are old. So this old woman is age-shaming people who aren't old. 
She's like, let me tell you something. I can still play 22, so don't even push it. <laughs> I mean, my God. <laughs> so, and, and Lacey Chabert has been in more than 30 Hallmark movies over the years. Said, yes. Included the one with Mariah Carey. Was she in that one? I'm pretty sure she was in that one. I'm pretty sure the the one that Mariah Carey uh, directed and then uh, the cameo in. Oh, I think you're right. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So she says, Lacey's getting older and we have to find someone like her to replace her as she gets older. She's God. not a vacuum. She's, she's <laughs> 42. Yeah. Our leading ladies are aging out. The filing alleged the executive told Perry, we need to find new talent to take their place. As for Perry, she said that Hamilton Daly told her she was too long in the tooth. <laughs> <laughs> what an archaic phrase for an old bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, let me tell you something. I was in Penny Farthing, the musical. Yeah. Okay, no one could touch me. Yeah. Meaning she was getting too old to keep her position at Hallmark. The former employee also believes she was terminated because of her age and because the company wanted someone who knows more young talent. Wow. Well, I mean, the, the truth is that, I mean, this is, I feel like this is not a Hallmark issue. This is just what happens in Hollywood. Not saying it's good, yeah. but Penny, it's like, Penny, have you been, where was You're your- 80 years old. Where, where was your advocacy 20, 30 years ago? Yeah. When any, all these things, all these shows out with the old. I mean, I don't like it in terms of like, you know, how it makes an older person feel. Well, but come on, Penny, you're- Let's turn this awful situation into a holiday Hallmark movie. Please. We will turn, we'll make this. We'll have an old Scrooge woman. Yes. And these two younger women. Mm -hmm. She gets fired from the network. They have to reconnect. They have the spirit of Christmas within them. It's called Old for the Holidays. <laughs> or um, give it, give it a, let's see, some sort of like hot to old. <laughs> <laughs> like ye old Christmas, <laughs> something along those lines. And at the end, they all become friends. They get yeah. invited to Christmas, and then she dies. <laughs> she dies, on and that's just day. the act one break. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know what? I mean, yeah. I think she should just say, "Listen, yeah, are you going to recast Santa Claus? Because last time I checked, he's an old fucker." Yeah. So you know what? Mm -hmm. Keep me around. Or she gets fired. There's a horrible accident. Her spirit goes into St. Nicholas and she has to be like a mall Santa yes. for, for life. And she's like, wow, look what it's like to be an older lady in a younger man's body. Mm -hmm. But she's actually just in Santa Claus. Exactly. Oh, yeah. It's a gift that keeps giving. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mark, what's I'll your wish? It. I will watch it. I will. Speaking, I, I would as well. I uh, Speaking of, of wishes and dreams, <laughs> Yes. I'm really happy to say that Fergie is finally free. Um, over the weekend, we had the singer Loomis. Oh. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, this is yes. I, these national anthem fails yeah. drive me insane, uh -huh. but the best train wreck. Like, I can't yeah. not watch them multiple times. They keep me up at night, uh, more so than Tamara Judge with green face under my bed. Um, <laughs> yeah, they really, they because you know what? They stay with you for your whole life. Like, whole, I still uh, remember Carl Lewis singing the national anthem for the Knicks back in the Oh, 90s. I don't. I don't know what that is. Was it terrible? It was, it was, mm. it was not good. Well, she <laughs> went on, this is, okay, mm. Fergie had her thing. Remember, yeah. it was like, whoa, 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 right, this one. <laughs> yes. This girl straight up just bit ass on television. Yeah. So she's seeing, she's like, oh, the, 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 oh, I fucked it up. I fucked it up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can, go back? Can we do it again? Can we do it again? Can we do it again? And they're like, no, we're live. <laughs> 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 then she keeps going and she messes up again. She's like, I'm sorry. I just got nervous. I'm just really nervous. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then finish the song and then just walks off the stage. You know what? She was getting ahead of the story. She's like, rather than release a statement later, let me do it on the fly in the middle of the song. You're like, you know what? Like, I fucked up. I fucked up America. Can you, I mean, meanwhile, there's like a full like race happening behind her with these well, candidates. Jill, Jill Stein is sitting there in her scarf like, oh my God, <laughs> why am I doing this? Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing more American than watching the younger generation say, I fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> about the national anthem. Yes. I'm sorry. Can we go back? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You want to watch it? Sure. Yeah. Uh, have you have you seen it? Did oh, I saw it. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's great. I didn't ever, but you know what though? It's too much. We're so good. It's also like, here we go. Can I go back? Can I go back, 
Please. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we're live. We're live. We're live. And she's like, ha! like, I mean, it's ha. it's a Halloween costume, by the way. She's at the right timing. People should dress as her. I honestly it, it uh, also why is why is this happening at a presidential debate? I don't know why it's happening at a president. Why, who asked Loomis to come sing the national anthem? She's also like these events are very formal, and mm-hmm. she's come, she's dressed like she's like it's like a Knicks game. I I and, know. Like <laughs> baby hairs are laid down. <laughs> she's got she's her got this like sort of like her. a pink and blue sort of like maybe a symbolic outfit yeah. or something like that, and she's out there singing this like I have never it's so much seen this. Well, and like you know she. Uh, I watched the beginning of one of the Dodgers games and it was like on in the background and there was like some like plain girl. She had like straight hair, mm. middle part. Yeah. Killed it. <laughs> she wasn't adding the whole like... <laughs> okay. uh, the song, look, listen, if you can get through the song itself, the song will do the heavy lifting for you. Yeah. You, you know do. who... You, my favorite rendition of the national anthem is Maya Rudolph on Saturday Night Live. Uh-huh. Hands yes. down, if you've never watched that sketch yes. on SNL, it's one of my favorites. That's Give a little proof <laughs> through the night. <laughs> it's Crazy the best. Yet. It's yeah. so good. Uh, uh, but rest easy. Rest easy, uh, uh, Fergie. Fergie, yeah. I think, just Fergie. turned into ash and blew in the wind and was like, thank you. You have been released. You have been released, and now Loomis, whoever Loomis is, she is here, and now she can take the place of Fergie. Well, I mean, this is like the second... Like, National Anthem, F up, like, the whole... Uh, I think the first one was that girl, and she was like, sorry, y'all, I was drunk. Oh, remember? yeah. What was that? I exactly. remember that. And then this one, this year... <laughs> <laughs> uh, get out of here. It's just, it's the way that her, she does that high pitch, like, sorry, sorry, I really messed up. I'm sorry, 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 i am sorry 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 i am so much for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me. Did you me. have fun? I had the best time. Good. I'm glad you did. Please come back anytime you want. Absolutely. I feel like I could talk to you for like another two hours. This was so fun. But please tell everybody where they can find you, where they can listen, all that yes. jazz. I know you have so much going on. So if you want to listen to Watch What Crappens, mm-hmm. uh, we're at Watch What Crappens on Instagram. We're at What Crappens on Twitter. Um, and our podcast is on all the platforms. And then throw me a follow because I base my self-worth off of followers mm. and I just am desperate to grow followers. <laughs> I'm not even going to like be shame, like shameless. I'm not going to be shamed. I'm not going to be shamed for yeah. it. I will be shameless. I just want followers. Yeah. So I'm at Ben Mandelker on Instagram and on Twitter. I promise you guys, yeah. follow him. He won't fuck it up. He won't fuck it up. I really fucked it up. I fucked it up. I fucked it up. Uh, and thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing all the clips and just really being devout Just Sayers. We love you guys. And we will see you next time on the Just Saying Podcast. You guys have a happy Halloween. Bye. Bye. <laughs>